pigeons and everyone can use it uh, especially that you are uh, actually representing the oil and gas uh, industry uh, Yanash, I know uh, very well the Institute, uh, institute of, um, of uh, the Institute de Hydrocarbures, uh, which is part of the University of Bumerdes. Uh, I'm going just to start with the, what I did. I think everyone is, uh, everyone here is interested to know how I got here, uh, what's my path. Uh, I was, you know, a simple student at the University uh, of uh, Bumerdes. Um, I did my bachelor's degree in computer science, uh, LINIM. Um, and then after this, I started the uh, Magister, master's degree. And then I got uh, some internship at the University of Perpignan in France. Uh, my field was uh, microarchitecture, Bunyat uh, al-Mu'alij al-Ali in Arabic. Uh, so I started the, my master's degree in uh, UMBB, University of Bombardes. It was a little bit hard because at that time the master's students they didn't have a right to uh, stay in uh, La Résidence and uh, I am from Cherchel so usually I do Cherchel uh, Bombardes, Cherchel Alger Bombardes which is uh, very difficult so don't take it easy it was very uh, very difficult I was struggling between transportation and then finding a room at the university uh, and uh, or university hostel and also, uh, you know, uh, trying to, at the same time, trying to study and, and get, uh, be the best, uh, at least. Um, because I, I, I believe in one thing, that, uh, that knowledge is, is power and can take me somewhere uh, very far. So this is what, uh, the, this, this was my strategy. And uh, yes, uh, after, uh, after, you know, after my first year of master's degree, I... I went to uh, the first time to the University of Perpignan in, in France. I did my internship with uh, one of the uh, best advisors in microarchitecture. And then uh, he kept me for uh, a PhD. Uh, so I got scholarship for PhD in the same field, computer architecture, computer, computer, computer architecture and computer design. And then I started my adventure uh, between conferences, trying to defend my uh, PhD. I was lucky because I could finish my PhD in, within three years, even less, uh, with all the, you know, the, the different conferences I did uh, everywhere in the world, in Europe and outside of Europe too. Uh, and then I uh, got the chance also to uh, actually uh, uh, present one of the papers that it was, um, it was uh, well um, accepted uh, at one of the conferences in Champaign, in Illinois, in the U.S., and then I started to understand what what does it mean uh, the U.S. or USA in terms of uh, microarchitecture. Um, I start to get at the same time uh, some limit in, in um, due to different uh, you know uh, factors. One of them is the language. So uh, and also the same thing uh, at the same time uh, the field the microarchitecture which is very, very developed in, uh, in the US. So um, after uh, presenting my paper, I, uh, I was accepted that the, at the, actually one of the advisors uh, suggested for me to um, uh, do a postdoc in Champaign, Illinois, which is not far from Chicago in Illinois state. And they did more than one year there. Uh, after this, uh, I was interested in embedded system, so I was looking for a postdoc for, which is linked to embedded system, um, because at that time it was like a, a field which everyone is was looking for and trying to uh, explore. Uh, so uh, I was accepted at the postdoc another one uh, because I did uh, before moving to Illinois. Uh, a third one was Im embedded system uh, or embedded software uh, with the Rheem BlackBerry, the, the, the smartphone company in uh, Canada. So BlackBerry is a Canadian company. Uh, I spent there four months. Why? Because at the same time, I was trying to uh, do interviews uh, for big companies. So I was very ambitious to, you know, hit uh, Google, Facebook, Apple, uh, Yahoo, uh, Intel, um, Qualcomm all these uh, companies, they are linked to um, the things that I was doing, especially computer architecture, computer science in general, and embedded system. 
So uh, I did more than uh, maybe 100 interviews. Um, one of them is just to test myself and see uh, how it works, especially with interviews, different culture in the US, different than, than France. Uh, also at the same time, we would like to explore. Uh, I wanted to explore the states in the US too, because for me, the com country uh, was unknown. I didn't know um, a lot of things about this country uh, or North uh, America, because it's uh, almost the same culture even though the combination between Illinois and, uh, and uh, Canada is a little bit, uh, was a little bit different, but you know, trying to get in and, and see how it works. Uh, and then I accepted the, an offer with Yahoo in 2012 as a simple uh, performance engineer. What does it mean? It means that if you have a, if you have a mail, a mail uh, with, with Yahoo, my job is to make it fast. Uh, uh, from the login that you put your credentials, just connect and then, uh, and then you, you can you start uh, looking at your email. So this process, um, it's complicated for some people. They just see it as just, you know, you need, you need just to log in and that's it. So it's a lot of resources behind and they work in different resources, especially in data centers and servers. Um, servers, which means every component on the server. Uh, we're talking about the CPU, but the CPU is connected to memory and then, and also the disk uh, or disk IO and uh, also a network um, and the server itself too. So we are, uh, I am dealing every day with different vendors. Um, for example, Dell, HP, all these big vendors for servers. I'm dealing with them in different data centers that we have to make uh, uh, Yahoo Mail the best user experience and the best user friendly um, uh, for Yahoo at that time. You know, with time, Yahoo, uh, you know, went through a difficult, difficult, good and bad situations until uh, Verizon decided to buy Yahoo. And uh, in 2016, Verizon bought Yahoo and different other media companies, becoming one of the biggest or largest media companies in the world. And now I am managing, uh, with time, I became uh, leading the team of performance and then managing the team. And then uh, I was uh, interested in artificial intelligence. And then here we go uh, with artificial intelligence management. Uh, the same, the same time, uh, at the same time working with a performance engineer in my uh, previous group. So now I am manager of performance engineer and AI at Verizon slash Yahoo. Uh, you can stop me any time if you have questions. As uh, Kenza said, I am the owner of Mubeshi Silicon Valley. Uh, Mubeshi Silicon Valley is a YouTube channel that you can subscribe right now if you want. I'm talking about different technologies and interviewing people, uh, best, the best people, uh, Algerian people in their field, uh, uh, cybersecurity, computer science, computer engineering, electronics, uh, and more. Uh, so the idea is just to show uh, to Algerian what's happening in Silicon Valley. I think this will help them a lot, uh, changing their reflection, changing uh, their ideas, and then maybe giving them other ideas similar to Silicon Valley. Um, Silicon Valley is the actually is the, the best spot for technology and they want to share this with the, my people in Algeria, especially students, because I believe that the students can do a lot of changes, a lot of changes in terms of technology and com communication and also education in Algeria, because this is what I see, this is what I saw the, the, during my, um, you know, uh, during my path since I left Algeria. Uh, youth people can do a lot of things, uh, especially when they, are, when they have intellect, they can change the world. So I think the hope for our journey is these people who are going to the university every day. I know that uh, every day when you go, you say, okay, you have a lot of challenges, you have a lot of problems, and this can make you a little bit upset, sad, mad, uh, you know, uh, uh, empowered. At the same time, it thinks that you make you stronger. Um, so I wanted to give you actually different, uh, also another presentation. Uh, I actually suggest to Kenza two different things, startups, because I actually, I, I did a lot of, uh, you know, I worked a lot of in startups and they created startups too. And also I worked with the professor Abdul Qasim Habba in different startups that uh, I started understanding how it works. Uh, but I think that artificial intelligence uh, for everyone is also a very good topic that we can handle today. The agenda is going to be uh, 
what's artificial intelligence, uh, what's the background for uh, of artificial intelligence. Uh, of course, uh, Liana, she's uh, oil and gas. I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence for oil and gas that can help you use artificial intelligence in every domain, especially for your domain, especially that Algeria is known for the oil and gas and Sonatrack is the biggest uh, company in the, maybe in Algeria and uh, maybe one of the largest in Africa. But it's an oil and gas company and you need to know a lot of things that you can move uh, forward and mo modernize this company using artificial intelligence or using some uh, or modernize it through different operations that can help the company for different operations that you know very very well uh, even better than me exploration whatever so i have been in boomer for uh, uh, five or six years I, I had some friends from vienna so i know a little bit of the keywords and then I try to combine these keywords with uh, things that I know with artificial intelligence, just to give you an idea, and then you, you get some reflection after this. Uh, you think you are good? Do you hear me very well, Kenza? Yes, uh, I hear you very well. Perfect, good. Great. I'm going to talk about machine learning and deep learning and then give you uh, a bit of a, a summary of what uh, different points that I'm talking about. Okay. Um, so why artificial intelligence and what the, the definition actually artificial intelligence is kind of the solution for the big data problem. So the big data problem, we have a big wave, exactly the, how you see it in this, this slide. You have this mojital bayonet, you have a big wave and then we don't know how, what to do with this data. And this is the biggest, actually the biggest problem here in Silicon Valley. You have maybe average uh, internet user uh, daily uh, by 2020, uh, which is now before of course the coronavirus, 1.5 gigabyte and the uh, autonomous vehicle or self-driving cars it's four terabyte of data we are generating every day and uh, connected planes or airplanes and smart factory or cloud video providers we are at uh, 750 uh, bytes of data so what we are going to do with this data we don't know uh, exactly what we are doing with this data, especially that when we know that we use only 1% of this data. It's a lot of data that we need to use. We know that it's going to be helpful for some specific areas. We are talking about system recommendations. We are talking about uh, computer vision. We are talking about different other fields that we can use the data. At least if we can do 10%, uh, it's going to be uh, the sophisticated world that you see or do you watch through different US movies or American movies. Uh, different domains uh, means that uh, a artificial intelligence can transform the, you know, the the, the, the healthcare. Today, uh, the grant, uh, operation, uh, the transportation, the energy, and the industry in general. So, and other fields that we don't know, but uh, in the future, for sure, when we uh, analyze our data because this is uh, one of the biggest or the the most challenged uh, ch uh, challenged operation which is to which is to clean this data and then find the way how we can use them uh, or use this data uh, for a good reason um, when we need to develop of course the algorithm and develop the application to, ex to explore and exploit this data in the future so if if we are talking about the the path uh, and I took this situation of, of the coronavirus or the COVID-19 just to give you an idea and then just to give you a real example. So if we are talking about the COVID-19, we are in the situation where we, we have a descriptive analytics because it's the first time that we have this situation or we think we thought that maybe we could manage it. But at the same time, with the, uh, you know, with the, this huge um uh huge uh, you know people that they were affected and then at the same time you have a lot of information a lot of data people start start to maybe um uh lost uh, start to be lost uh in this situation so we just we are just descriptive in a descriptive analysis or trying to understand what's happening and then maybe after this uh, period or uh, of time or uh, the coronavirus will be more a diagnostic analytics so just to give you an idea if we have the if we had this situation before or we prepared for this situation we could be at 
uh, we could avoid the situation through artificial intelligence because we have all the data that already we analyze it or uh, uh, got the information before and then we just uh, need to follow some specific strategy that or take a decision because artificial intelligence will help you taking the decision very fast through the data that you analyze every day and then uh, at least you find the solution very very quickly so uh, we don't need to predict we don't need to um, or and the, the machine is, is going to learn through itself because you have uh, enough data to analyze so maybe after the covid or maybe after the peak of uh, of the covid 19 uh, for different cases uh, uh, we can be at the diagnostic analytics but we are so far of understanding what's the situation and then in the future how we can solve this problem if uh, we don't take this data and if this is what people are trying to rush uh, to take this data analyze the data and then do some advanced analytics in the future using artificial intelligence uh, and then we will hit maybe uh, the self-learning uh, or how to do i proceed just to with uh, pushing the one button so this is this is the why artificial intelligence is important today especially with the, with the healthcare or the using data science for te biotechnology or biology in general uh, the, this this is why this is why we need to actually act today using the data that we have for problem or similar problem it's not going to be only for covid or any virus but it's going to be different situations especially in algeria that we are um we, are, we have a lot of challenges in the future and uh, actually i was in boomer in 2003 uh during the earthquake uh, earthquake so um i think i think it's a seismic and everyone knows you are a student in uh, in, in this field uh, i think you have um, uh, uh, you have you you learned something about it but we have we are in the very seismic uh, region especially boomer desk and it was a catastrophe before and hopefully people they got some information some data that we can use in the future to avoid some uh, this, i mean future catastrophe uh, to save lives uh, especially in boomer desk and the wilaya of boomer desk and the the, the region uh, um, o2 I, I i think i think uh, algiers uh, to uh, maybe different other regions in Algeria. So uh, I think one of the catastrophes is not going to be only COVID, but different other things that where we can use uh, the, the, the artificial intelligence. So of course, artificial intelligence is kind of uh, a new field uh, for uh, where we can plug it or a tool where we can plug it for different sciences. Uh, we can use it for uh, oil and gas, we can use it for even for computer science, we can use it for uh, healthcare, uh, we can use it for biology or biotechnology, different other fields that where we can generate data. Uh, so, uh, of course, everyone is jumping on, on this field and maybe 46% uh, that um, people that are trying to build their company startups using artificial intelligence, 4% of them, they have uh, implementation because uh, they they uh, they hit by the the new field that no one can understand it very well. We don't have a lot of data scientists. Uh, we don't have a lot of programmers for uh, data science or for artificial intelligence. So people they are trying to learn at the same time, trying to build things or uh, startups or build their ideas and create uh, some projects through their ideas uh, using artificial intelligence. Here we we are going to see the actually the 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 life cycle uh, exactly how, how we we see it in software where you have a life cycle of software starting from uh, specification of needs and then uh, and then starting the development and then test it and then do the maintenance and then do the through go through the loop same thing here but the most important thing is actually the team that you are working with or uh, or with who you are uh, working, uh, especially for artificial intelligence, uh, where they need a lot of expertise, a very good approach, and then good uh, philosophy uh, in artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, there is another thing which is very important is the data. So the data, uh, the best representative data that you have, uh, the best artificial intelligence algorithm project that you can get. Uh, so everything is based on data, and ju just don't forget that the big data is the problem. You go through artificial intelligence to solve this problem and then uh, deliver something, uh, some product to the users. Of course, the organization and the infrastructure, 
Uh, sometimes it's a little bit uh, uh, expensive uh, because sometimes you need to do it in production. You do the implementation, you need some specific infrastructure to develop it. But sometimes it's like a very easy idea that you can use uh, through uh, specific data that you can grow through the time. But this, you can go deeper and then understand very, very well, uh, you know, the artificial intelligence and the data, the raw data, and then the, the clean data to develop your, your, uh, your approach. So these are the life cycle of the artificial intelligence project at the same time, different challenges. And as I said, the most important thing, and I think it's the, uh, the most important uh, thing in any project is the, the team. Um, here we, we see different, uh, different data, how, we, how the big companies uh, or the industry can use this uh, big data uh, to develop or to optimize their operations. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 we have different approach. We can, we can go uh, through the analytics business uh, intelligence and then you have a statistical uh, machine learning and then also deep learning. We are going to see what's the difference between these three, three concepts um, and the, the history is going to uh, uh, explain why we created this. Uh, I'm going to share some stuff that maybe for the first time that you, you learn about um, um, because I was participating in some of them. Uh, but um, people, they use some stuff before, uh, especially statistics and analytics to, to use their data and they try to do things. Now with the compute resources, things are different because you, you have already some um, uh, specific resource that you can use and make it fast and then you are going to save a lot of, lot of time, especially in large manufacturers uh, where you uh, take advantage of this data using a specific computer, supercomputers, or different devices that you can use in your computer or servers, in data centers or whatever, to uh, optimize uh, your operations. And we are talking about big companies here, especially for oil and gas, where they, um, they use different uh, and giant supercomputers to understand uh, the geology, different, you know, different fields that um, um, uh, we use in usually in the petroleum sector or uh, the, the oil and gas sector. So the difference in this way, uh, every time I explain it in a way, like uh, uh, we're talking about Bumardes, uh, Algeria and Africa. Bumardes can be the deep learning and Algeria is the machine learning and artificial intelligence is Africa. So uh, it's kind of uh, the big field is artificial intelligence, which is, uh, it's, it's a known field. It's a very old field. I think it was created in 1950s. Uh, and the, but the time uh, it was the first maybe machine learning algorithm that uh, was created. And then we had some winters. What does it mean winters? That we didn't care uh, really about the artificial intelligence because uh, of the leak of some specific things. And these, these uh, things are the compute. So we didn't really um, uh, have something. We have the very good ideas, but when we, we touch big problems, complex problems, we are uh, limited or hit by the compute. Um, uh, machine learning was created in 70s, which means that it's the same period of time that Intel was created in the 1970s. Um, so we had some, we had some uh, compute uh, CPU that uh, was actually helpful, very, very helpful to stop the winter between the 50s and 90s and 70s. And then machine learning started because we have some compute resources, which is the CPU, the Intel CPU that helped a lot to actually develop machine learning. Uh, and the machine learning is the, uh, all these algorithms that performs uh, uh, to, uh, or who, who has a, who they, they have performance to improve uh, uh, all the, this data, all the exposed data that we need to take advantage of them. Um, and then after, the, uh, after that, we got some, uh, another winter, another winter because, again, we hit the complex uh, algorithm for machine learning. So we were waiting for something that can help until 2006 in, in deep learning. Actually, uh, a lot of people, they think that the 2006 was the first, uh, the first days of the deep learning. Why? Because NVIDIA created their GPUs. So we moved from the GPU for gaming to the GP, GP, which we call the GP GPUs, to uh, you know tackle any pro compute problem with the, these GPUs uh, on the surface. Then the deep learning created the, was created. So most of people they ask me what's the difference between machine learning and deep learning. The machine learning is actually you go through the process where you have the input your data, 
and then you do uh, feature extraction and then you have all this neural network and then you have your uh, output. Uh, extraction uh, or the feature extraction uh, uh, in machine learning you, is uh, actually you, the, the, the human is doing it. Um, and then preparing all everything for the machine, that the machine is going to do all this neural network and compute to get the output. In deep learning, everything is automa uh, automated. It means that the, 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 the feature extraction and neural network is going to be done by the machine because we have enough compute to replace the machine, the, the, the human being. And maybe in the future we have a new concept where everything is going to be made by the machine and then it's going to maybe create another field where uh, the machine is going to develop the, the machine, which means that you have the, this machine learning and then I saw a lot of application with Google and the, uh, Facebook where the, the application is writing the code. I mean the machine, the Python, the, the machine is uh, coding in Python. Uh, which means that you just give the book of Python, you do some training, the machine will learn how to do programming and then the machine will program itself and execute after this, of course. Okay, uh, this, this is one of the definition uh, from Intel. And I actually, the, the Intel one is the one that I liked more than Wikipedia. It's the, the artificial intelligence is a program that can sense, reason, act and adapt. And then you compare this to the human being. Um, the only thing that maybe we add is the feeling that a human being can add on the top of the, the sense, reason, act, and adapt. So uh, this is the idea. I think the objective. Today, we are not at this stage. This is just the definition. But I think in the future, machine is going to be uh, at that level, uh, really. Uh, yeah, so I added these slides because, um, of course, I'm, my audience is oil and gas uh, people uh, or students that are learning to be one day in the field. So uh, traditionally before or now, even now in Algeria, what we do, uh, if we would like to get some uh, information um, uh, about the oil and gas or uh, reserves, we you know, uh, if we don't have enough data, then we are going to spend a lot of time. And then sometimes we, we, we go far to find the, to find the, 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 the uh, reserves. Uh, and this will cost the company a lot. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we see the situation today at the, at the, especially in the US where the price of, uh, of the, of the oil is very, very cheap and people they are doing, uh, they are making fun through the Facebook about the price uh, compared to the McDo or McDonald sandwiches and um, a lot of other things. Uh, this is of course uh, for this uh, uh, economic crisis uh, linked to coronavirus, but at the same time, because we didn't take good decisions uh, or the different companies here in the US linked to the oil and gas, they, too, they didn't take a very good uh, decision uh, through the data they have. Uh, of course, sometimes it's an obligation. They are forced to do it, but I, 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 I think if the, they have, or they had enough data, they could avoid uh, uh, this 94% of people they are talking about, 97% of cost going down. So, uh, of course, the data will help a lot uh, uh, to avoid going far to get the, the, the oil reserves or the, also the, the price uh the, the the cost of the oil can 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 be very effective in this case how with artificial intelligence when we use the economical uh, or economic political and weather data this will help a lot to understand in where where is the best spots for the best production uh for oil and gas we are going to avoid a lot of transportation and uh, you know getting all this output through the data that we 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 collected uh, political data is very important, uh, for, especially for international companies. When 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 they go to a, a country they don't know, they only know that it's a very rich con country for oil and gas. Um, uh, and uh, and you know this too. Uh, weather it's very very important. We see this in the, the desert of Algeria, and I uh, have a lot of friends they are talking about this every day. Um, and uh, also uh, all this data that we got through economy, and that we can see. Uh, today, what's the problem with, the, with the, the price of oil here in the US? Uh, here are some, uh, actually, um, uh, how uh, the situation in some com companies 
and also uh, what what the RMIT Institute did to uh, develop these robots, the smart robots for uh, exploration, uh, especially in oceans and uh, and also uh, uh, for the di different different uh, different uh, spots. Uh, and they uh, most of them they use a lot of deep learning techniques to learn uh, through their mistakes. So back to uh, to so we are going to do artificial intelligence and then machine learning and then we talk about deep learning. So uh, we, we are going to talk about the machine learning, um, and this is also good good uh, good uh, actually definition. Uh, what's machine learning exactly? So the study programs that are not explicitly programmed but learn patterns uh, as they are exposed to more data or uh, over the time. So uh, let's say I'll give you one of the examples uh, that I'm dealing every day. So uh, one of the programs for machine learning that uh, the spam emails uh, and the, the, the pipeline is going to be you have different emails that you receive every day you have specific and actually this is included in your Gmail account or Yahoo email account or whatever that it's automatically trying to uh, classify or categorize your spam emails to a non spam email. So th this is very easy and very good uh, example for artificial intelligence where you have different emails and you have your algorithm, uh, which is uh, part of the email uh, uh, or email uh, application that just classifying different emails to tell you this is a spam, this is not spam. And then of course, uh, we need the user experience to uh, help uh, filter some of the emails that we think that they are not spam and then uh, the user will classify this and as an email. This is a very good idea to take this and seen, uh, which we call unseen examples and then take them to the machine and the machine will understand that at the next step that okay, oh, this is, this is, a, this is not actually, this is a spam and we thought it's not a spam, then we take it a category to spam. Next time you, know, you are not going to see it um, on, uh, on your email inbox but you will see it on your uh, spine box. Of course, <clears throat> uh, when, when, when you make it more complicated, which means you add more features, especially for example, if you go with the, um, you know, different type of animals, for example, and similar animals where you, uh, if you go with dogs and cats, uh, maybe with the time, then the machine will understand this is a cat, this is a, a dog, but for the specific, specific race of, of dogs, then you, you need to do a lot of uh, uh, features. Then your neural network is going to be more complicated and then by the time you need more compute, we'll ca classify this from a machine learning to a deep learning category uh, because it's more complicated and it's more compute consuming. Uh, so two main type of machine learning, everyone knows about the, you know, or her, uh, heard about the supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Um, so you have your data set and then you have the goal uh, and then and then see um, I think this is uh, also a very good example to usually give to just give the difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning let's say if you want to play chess you have two you have two uh, actually two uh, solutions to learn how to play chess it's either go to, and watch people will let domain field just there domain field just there is very good idea especially with students they like to play domain, especially for Ramadan. So if you want to learn to learn domain, so uh, or domino, you just go and watch people how they play. So this is we call it a supervised learning. Why? Because they know how to do it, and then your data is kind of labeled, and then through this you can understand how the game will be. So you are going, they are going to teach you by playing, which is supervised. And supervised learning it means that. You learn it by yourself. You go and you know uh, read from scratch. You don't know if you're going to learn it or not. Exactly the same how you read a book. And then at the end, you understand maybe things or you don't understand. You you are not labeling your data, or you can mix between both of them, which means that okay, I I about it. people, which we call it on artificial intelligence semi uh, supervised learning. So this is the idea. The idea is you have. Uh, you, you make prediction in supervised learning uh, or you try to actually the super, unsupervised learning you don't have a labeled data so your data is unknown and through the data you are trying to find 
uh, who, how to structure your data. Uh, uh, and this is the difference. Uh, uh, machine learning examples. We have a lot of examples, uh, of course. Fraud detection is one of the examples. Uh, uh, and you have a lot of actually features on this um, uh, because uh, it's not only, okay, maybe someone is using your, uh, your, uh, your numbers on your credit card or debit card, or whatever, but we are going to take different other information. One of them is the transaction time, transaction amount, location, the category of purchase. Now this can complicate the algorithm because uh, if one of them or three of them are true and the, th the fourth one is not true, then the, all, the whole thing is going to be, uh, the output is going to be completely different than uh, adding or uh, actually taking off one of the features. The limitation, as I said, uh, the limitation is uh, when you complicate the, in the machine learning with different features uh, with att or attributes, then we are hitting the deep learning. Uh, and uh, uh, it's not ab about the dog and cat. It's, it's, all, it's when we focus more in a, in a dog and then go through all the races of, uh, of the dog, then it's going to be different features and then this will hit different uh, or, more, or your neural network is going to be more and more complicated. And here we go with the deep learning. The deep learning, uh, so machine learning that involves using very complicated models. We call this a deep neural network or a deep learning. So the deep learning is more about the machine learning, which is part of the artificial intelligence with more complicated neural network. Uh, here, one of the examples where we actually um, compare the machine to the deep learning. So let's say you have a face of a person and you try to uh, predict the person with, of course, certain uh, percentage that, uh, for example, um, if you take the person and, uh, and with the human being, it's, it's a little bit uh, different, even though today with the deep learning, the prediction with the machine is better than the human being for uh, face recognition. But here, here we have the, 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 this situation where we are trying to predict the, the face of this person. Of course, we use all this mathematical and function or formulas uh, and then go through, uh, through different features. And then we have some classifier algorithm to get the output. Uh, and, and of course, with the, with the deep learning, here we have, a, uh, well, for the, neural, uh, for the machine learning, we have maybe one to two layers of the neural network. For the deep learning, we are going more about, you have your input layer, you have different hidden layers, which we call the neural network and layers, or, and every, all the layers are connected between them. Uh, and then you have the, 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 the output layer, but the more complicated that we are with the neural network is, is going to be more about the deep learning, uh, especially when we have a lot of features that we need to match and then interact between layers. Uh, and every node, it can be a feature or attribute and then the connection is going to be understanding if, uh, for example, this guy is smiling or this guy is not, is not happy and so on. These are more about um, uh, a deep learning problems. Uh, now, if this person is uh, A or B, then it's going to be mostly about the machine learning because we don't have a lot of features. We just uh, compare different uh, or do uh, some image processing. <coughs> This is another, uh, another, uh, another uh, example, but more about deep learning basics, uh, where we compare the training and inference. Uh, in Arabic, training is a uh, tadrib, and inference is a stidlal in Arabic. So what's the difference between training and inference? Inference is truly more taking advantage of our deep learning application or a deep learning algorithm. When we are done, we have the product, just use it in our uh, smartphone or use it in our computer where we don't have a lot of computes because the training needs a lot of compute. So we do the training in servers or the whatever, and then inference is going to be using. Let's say you have a backend application running on your server, and then you have application that you just install in your smartphone and then you use it for, let's say, um, uh, uh, voice recognition, music recognition, whatever, and face matching, whatever on your uh, on your uh, on your 
laptop or your uh, smart uh, phone. Let's say in training you have human bicycle and strawberry, right? And then you go all through your neural network and then you ask if this is a strawberry with a picture of a bicycle. Then the first loop is going to tell you, no, actually this is a bicycle, it's not a strawberry. You go back to your uh, data and then your network and then you, you give, you add this information that this is the shape of the bicycle and this is the shape of the strawberry. Um, after that, you have a label data, let's say we are going with a supervised learning and then we are going to through the loop for different objects that we are showing to the, our algorithm. Uh, and then we would like to see actually if in reality is going to work. And if you see in inference, the shape of the a bicycle is completely different than the thing we saw or do train this, uh, our algorithm at the beginning. And this is unseen picture. And then the machine has this ability because we did a lot of training that this is going to tell you that this is actually a bicycle, even though we, I didn't see it before, but it has a shape like the, 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 the bicycle that I saw during my training time. And then of course you have accuracy because when we talk about artificial intelligence in general and specifically about deep learning, it's always about prediction. Let's say if, if, if this is a bicycle, it's going to be 99% bicycle and 1% of something else. Uh, and it's always, always by, the, by this prediction. Uh, and then we, have, we are talking about regression, errors, all the mistakes that, uh, that, that we can develop um, in the future. But this is only basic about artificial intelligence that you can understand all this terminology and, and understand all this uh, different uh, or differences between the machine and the deep learning and artificial intelligence. So uh, let's get back to machine learning two ways, supervised and uh, unsupervised learning. So um, the supervised learning, uh, we train the model, we feed the model with the, uh, with the correct uh, model, learn and finally predict. With unsupervised learning, it's actually we are going to spend most of the time trying to clean uh, the data and label the data. Then we, it's going to become a supervised learning. Of course, in unsupervised learning, it's going to be uh, harder and more complicated because the data are not labeled. So the machine is going to struggle a little bit because it's going to be lost at the beginning until that the data will be labeled and then we can go uh, through the uh, supervised learning. So what's the best way? Of course, uh, everyone, everyone is used for specific uh, reason because sometimes you cannot label your data. Uh, uh, it's good that you have, uh, uh, you have a, a labeled data, but sometimes you are in a situation with, which we call the raw data. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, supervised learning, it's more about the classification and regression and then surprised it's more about clustering and a recommendation uh, which well, for recommendation systems like Amazon, for example, uh, when you see all, uh, if you would like to buy things and you see all this recommendation on your uh, cart that are linked to things that the product that you used before. Supervised uh, learning classification. Um, uh, we have here, uh, they, they use it in specific field, which is the sentiment analysis, uh, especially in Twitter. There's a very good paper uh, about sentiment analysis using Twitter uh, data set. It's very, very good. For people who are interested in understanding this field, just uh, um, you know, um, connect with Ken Zand and share this with me and I will give you, I, will say, I can send you the paper I have it. It's a very, very good paper or with the prediction that we were talking about for spam or spam for emails. <clears throat> uh, supervised learning, uh, we have been talking about the training uh, with knowing the, the data. Uh, and then when we add unseen uh, data or unseen picture wherever for test, then we are, uh, we are going to, to do it as, uh, we are going to talk about inference instead of that. Uh, most of people, they ask which model I, I need to use for specific uh, supervised or unsupervised learning or if I would like to build my project using artificial intelligence. Um, which, which, uh, which model I need to use and uh, again, it depends on the situation. If, if, if you are talking about the time needed for training, um, 
And this is this is all. Uh, this is the, the example I usually give. It's for uh, self-driving cars. So the future, uh, the future with cars, uh, if if it's going to be successful with the self-driving cars, um, I think it's the parameters are not going to be the same like now. Like when you go, you ask if you, if you would like to buy a car. It's not. Uh, it's not going to be what's the color. Oh, mostly maybe you you choose the color, but it's not going to be with the 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 power of the car, or uh, neither with the with the with the the year, uh, or for example the maybe the because your safety. The future with self-driving cars is going to be with uh, how many years or how many weeks or how many months of training because this will be the experience of your car. It's going to be about your safety more than anything else. So the future, uh, I was talking a lot with people, uh, the future with self-driving cars, people they will own, uh, if they are really rich, they own very expensive car that they go, uh, they use it for the, the, the weekend, for example, but for the commute, like, like everyday car is going to be a self-driving car with very, very long um, uh, days and years of training because of their safety. And uh, what does it mean? Training means that you have a, you 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 can see and see scenes that uh, can the car the automatically can avoid with their uh, with uh, with its uh, own uh, auto training or uh, or uh, you know um, or auto machine learning with itself. So this is going to be the, the future uh, if we are talking about uh, this specific. I mean, a uh, uh, concept which is train uh, versus uh, versus inference. Speed is making predictions uh, because because um, if you spend a lot of time uh, with the training, it's not going to be the same prediction or performance. We call it performance of any uh, neural network. Uh, type of data, amount of data needed, and also the problem complexity, and the ability to solve a complex problem, and uh, and different other parameters, but most of the most, I mean, the most important parameters are here. And then of course we can talk about the evaluation metrics, which is the performance of our neural network, either in a deep learning or machine learning, where you have a currency, which is mostly linked to uh, predictions. And then you have the different other uh, metrics, uh, for example, the means uh, squared error that can give you the uh what's the error in prediction if we say this is a dog this is a cat what's the percentage of uh, this prediction this is one of the thing uh, of uh, unsupervised learning uh, uh, learning clustering um, here we are talking about the market uh, segmentation and this is very helpful it's kind of a little bit of co connected to time series data too uh, or here we have different thing for the serious gamers, casual gamers, or the different, uh, uh, you know, play time in hours for this market segmentation or for specific for gamers. Deep learning. So you need to know that for image, uh, image recognition, the human, being, uh, the human being can do a mistake for image recognition, let's say you have a friend from far and you, you watch it or you see it and then you made a mistake that this guy is actually Ahmed instead of Zakaria. Uh, the human being can mi make mistake uh, of maybe between zero to 8%, I would say 5%. Uh, and actually the deep learning, using the deep learning, the machine can do better. And uh, in 2010, for example, before, you know, when we started the, this the deep learning, getting the, this compute setup, whatever, uh, we the, the deep learning was at almost 30%. And of course, the human being is always stable with this 5% accuracy. Speech recognition, actually, the, hum, the, the machine learning is doing even better than that. 2000, we were at 23, 24%. And the human being always at 5% or 6%. Now it's uh, actually the deep learning the, for the speech recognition, the human being uh, is even worse than, than the machine. The machine can do better than this. This is why actually the deep learning is, uh, uh, is uh, important. And of course we can use it for different other things. Uh, for your case, the oil and gas search is one of the most important thing where we can use deep learning. 
this is classification and detection uh, where we can uh, do the detection. This is uh, actually a real application and it's tutorial. I'm giving this to my students to develop for object detection where we can detect a person from, it's, um, uh, from his moto, motorcycle. And then you, call, you can go with a semantic segmentation or a thermal segmentation where you can label every pixel. Same thing here for nat natural language objective a trivial, which means that we add in the caption. So how we, can, um, how we can migrate or how we can convert the picture to a picture with a caption, understanding what, what you have inside. This will help a lot on search engine like Yahoo search or Google search. And this is for speech recognition and language translation. So how we can do, do the natural language processing uh, from input uh, from input any language to another language. This is for English and this is for Mandarin or Chinese language. These are the application or examples for different deep learning applications. So this is neural network connectivity where you have the fully connected network and this is going to be part of the deep learning where we have layers, complicated layers and every layer is connected to, to each other and then we can use some layers or deep learning models for different things, which means that we develop or, um, uh, or we have some open source that we can use and we can take a, a sub layers for our uh, different uh, projects or a neural network or artificial intelligence project. Conversional neural network, same thing where we um, either go with the recurrent and the machine will understand with it uh, how to detect some specific features uh, with, the, with the neural network. Getting to the summary, I, I wanted to finish fast. I don't know if you have the enterprise version here or the 40 minutes thing, uh, but I think we, we already, um, we are already across the 40 minutes means that you have the enterprise version. Yeah, the summary, uh, we saw how the artificial intelligence will impact and transform many segments in our society. The capability will continue to, to grow. And then we saw the difference between the machine learning and deep learning. Uh, machine learning um, requires for uh, human, human engineers to do the extraction for the deep learning. It's going to be fully automated by, by, the, by, the, by the machine. And then we saw also the difference between the training and inference. This is the book I'm trying uh, I uh, It's going to be pushed. Uh, it's about artificial intelligence for everyone. Uh, so I wrote this book through, uh, through the experience I had in the past. And also I added some examples and uh, exercise for, the, for, uh, for students. So this will be very good a book uh, for people that they want to start artificial intelligence from, from scratch and then do some hands-on using examples and that's it uh, thank you very much if you have questions please feel free to ask anything <clears throat> uh, thank you so much uh, Murad, uh, Murad. I now we're going to uh, have question, your questions please write them down here uh, in the discussion and uh, who will answer them. Hello, sir. Can I ask you a question? Tell me. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. My name is Anas Bezid. Uh, I am uh, going to ask you a bit of silly question, but I think is generally like uh, intriguing. So what do you think if the, that we got so like developed in AI that the, the machine can disobey uh, the one who created? Is this a possibility or not? Okay, I'm going to answer to this question uh, with a discussion that I had with uh, Professor Belkasim Habba. So uh, Belkasim Habba, he told me once that uh, before, uh, if we would like to be connected, we move and connect to something like a computer, whatever, at that time was the computer and still. Now we have phones and then we, we start hear, uh, hearing about, uh, you know, and now it's a kind of developed, in, especially in Silicon Valley, about IoTs or Internet of Things, where every, every object is connected to another object. So everything will be connected. Uh, before it was, if we'd like to connect, we move to connect to something. Now everything is connected. 
and we are just a guest. So this is a little bit scary because if everything is connected, where everything is talking to everything or any object can talk to any, any object, at some point, um, we will have some problem, especially with security. Uh, I don't want to talk about uh, what you see uh, or watch in the movies that, you know, uh, that the machine can kill the human being, whatever. But um, with, the, with the lack of security and privacy, yes, it can be a big problem because, of course, in this world, we have some good people and we have some bad people. And if we have bad people and they are smart and they would like to do something bad, using your data or getting through the security, a hack, some object that they are connected uh, around you, then yes, the machine can do something bad, but it's going to be manipulated by the human being using the lack of security and the lack of privacy. So uh, that is a big challenge. Of course, the technology is here to help the human being, but of course we see every day there's a problem of hacking, problem of security that they can make or they can be very very dangerous uh, and it's not going to finish because every time you can you create something you create firewall whatever uh, some people they are smart and that they create something they find some gap on the system and then they can do something bad uh, so i don't think that the machine by itself is going to kill the human being i think some bad people behind they are smart and they can manipulate this machine uh, hacking the security or using your privacy to uh, kill, kill another people or do some dangerous things to, uh, uh, to people. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions, Kinza? <coughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> لا لا مشكلة كان مستر أسلم بولك بي he wants to ask a question. السلام عليكم. My name is Aslam. I have 15 plus years of petroleum engineering experience. I'm a PhD in petroleum engineering with machine learning. Yeah. So I personally believe. You know, uh, in oil and gas, especially in upstream petroleum engineering, uh, machine learning will be something like a must-have. Yeah, without machine learning skill, within I I think within five to seven years, yeah, um, it will be really hard to find a job. I mean, what I mean by a job, by by what I mean is a good job. Yeah, if you look at the historically in 2014 to 16 when the oil price first collapsed, yeah, we were seven million people. Uh, working in upstream oil and gas. So during these two years, we were cut down by 2 million people. So in the beginning of 2020, we were 5 million people. So with the current recent developments in the oil price, it's forecasted that we will be cut again. We will go under cut, cutting people again to 1 million. So we will end up with 4 million by end of 2020. So at the same time, our reservoirs and uh, formations are getting deeper it's getting more mature due to the natural decline. We are developing now more complex fields yeah, than we used to have. So with a shortage of people, the necessary skill will be machine learning. I mean, in personal experience, I use Python and some other things like, uh, you know, K9, which is another excellent software. Without a single line of coding, you can do machine learning, yeah? at least with a start with basics of it yeah on top of that uh, petroleum engineering petroleum industry is now adopting uh, not machine learning as per se but uh, data analytics like softwares like a tableau and spotfire these are the two main softwares that is a must have in petroleum engineering now so uh, my question is sorry for the long introduction but my question would be uh, what do you think um, Will it be um, petroleum engineers have to learn machine learning and we will evolve ourselves? Or do you think we'll be disrupted by uh, data scientists and programmers emerging to petroleum engineering? And uh, part B of my question is, what do you think, how long it will, this will take from your perspective? Thank you. You're welcome. Very good, uh, very good question, uh, Aslan. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think I think your keywords that you are using, um, 
means that you are in the field and then you are using the right things uh, or right keywords uh, to explain things. So thank you very much, Aslan. So the answer is, um, I, th I think every field need to uh, need to get some programming language. Uh, of course, Python is the top one because you can use it essentially. It's the, the language for artificial intelligence um, tools uh, or data science in general, because Python has all these modules that you can connect uh, to the data, the data that, uh, is, that you are using for any field. Uh, it's not going to be only for petroleum engineering or oil and gas sector, uh, but any, for any field. Every student, every engineer needs to learn programming. Not only programming as just uh, you know writing some specific uh, lines of code, but how to connect this to their field, because this is the most important thing. Computer science, uh, it's not going to be enough only to uh, to use it as a tool, uh, which means that of, of course in in a team doing the artificial intelligence uh, project, let's say in your in any company, petroleum company, you need a data scientist. You need uh, a data uh, research uh, person uh, who has a PhD in data science because everything is, is actually linked to the theory, mathematics through the data science and statistics. You need a guy who is very good in statistics. You need a guy who's good in software engineering, uh, doing programming specifically for Python. And you need some guy or a person who is very good in algorithm because you need to do the implementation of your a specific algorithm and then you call the software engineer to do the implementation or to convert this algorithm to a specific application but you need people who are going to do marketing uh, for you and, and also people who are doing who are going to do communication because you need to explain what you are trying to do uh, with your executive so this is the the ideal team this is the dream team for any artificial intelligence uh, project now, if we talk about uh, the, the, the education, the education for, uh, for, for people who are in, in your sector and, and you, you said that, yeah, uh, actually the petroleum sector lost a lot of like 2 million in between 2014, 2016. Yeah, because the machine is going to replace most of them. The machine is going to make it easier uh, because, but, but you, you need to develop this. And I don't think that, especially in Algeria, I don't think we are uh, today, we are ready for that. But in the future, we are going to have a huge competition because the machine, if we, if we want, if you don't want, it's more accurate, especially when you develop the algorithm or you develop your model very, in very well conditions and also use the best engineers, uh, either the, the software engineers and also the petroleum engineers, uh, then the combination is going to be good. So the uh, software engineers, they are going to help the, the petroleum engineers to make it uh, to make it ideal, but the, the petroleum engineer need to learn programming because he is the guy who is on the field. He knows better than the software engineer, or uh, or converting in in both sides means that the the, the the computer engineer, if he's interested, he need to learn, and it's a science. Petroleum engineering, it's a big engineering uh, sector. And for me, it's complicated the same way as a, as a computer science or computer engineering. So he need to convert or she need to convert to understand all this science uh, or the petroleum engineer needs to, uh, to get enough um, uh, programming knowledge or skills to, uh, to, to solve some uh, artificial intelligence problems. But the team is clear. You cannot, you cannot be everywhere, but programming is going to be kind of the, the, the the, the, the skill that it's mandatory for any petroleum engineers. Hopefully I answered to your question. Thank you. Another question. Please go ahead, it's, uh, Aslan. No, I would, I, I would, I wanted just to thank you, yeah, for excellent presentation, yeah. It was very informative. Um, <laughs> Uh, the question I have also, what do you think, how long it might take uh, petroleum, petroleum industry uh, to go through the transformation of digitalization and implementing, adopting the machine learning in terms of years? What do you think? The, the, uh, this question for Algeria or for the world? Uh, for the world and also for Algeria. 
Yeah, so different answers for Algeria. I think I think uh, we are a little bit behind, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence. I don't know what's what's uh, people uh, and it's actually it's in Boomerdes, um, the the Centre de Recherche son Attrac. I don't know whether uh, if they have some big projects, especially uh, linked to artificial intelligence, with uh, with the petroleum engineering uh, sector. But in the world, uh, let me tell you a story. So here, when we started the deep learning in 2000. Uh, in 2006. So in 2012, 2013, uh, I was actually, uh, I was architecting the platform for artificial intelligence and deep learning at Yahoo to use uh, some specific, um, you know, the deep learning application like at that, at that time was Cafe, uh, TensorFlow, uh, a, lot of, a lot of deep learning platforms that I, 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 uh, I was trying to install and then uh, get the hardware so to, to get the hardware, was I was looking for a specific server with four GPUs in one server. So they are all connected uh, to do some training, uh, like intensive compute and training for specific application that we used at Yahoo at that time. So we were looking uh, for uh, the vendor. It was Dell. Dell was the, the, best, the, best, uh, the best server. Uh, to do this four GPUs within one server. And then when I ask them, okay, I think we are good with the, with the, with the one of the servers that you have. Uh, so when you are going to start shipping, they said, we, we, you know what, we, we don't have anything. We don't have anything. And they said, okay, <laughs> so what's the, what's the problem? They said all the oil companies, they bought the, the servers because, you know, it was just the booming. And the, the first companies, that they were even before the high tech companies, they were the oil and, and gas companies, and they, it was in Houston. All the U.S. companies in Houston, they bought these servers, and I was shocked. Like, oh, actually, I, I thought that the, you know high tech companies they are most advanced in this sector. No, actually, oil and gas companies, they already got the artificial intelligence, got all the, installed the, the deep learning platforms, and then bought the hardware already. So they started before the high-tech companies. They have some people, they are good in programming, good in uh, whatever the field that you are working for, and they started. So I think it's a very, very developed here, even before the high-tech companies. And uh, it's, a, it's a message that people, they are doing a lot of stuff, uh, even outside of the high-tech the high, the high tech companies that we were, at that time, we, it was, I was doing just research, research and development. It was just, just to uh, trying to build some cluster with all GPUs connected, and and the people in Houston they were already uh, ready to do some training. Uh, so I was I was a little bit uh, 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 scared with this. I don't know if in Algeria is going to be similar, especially with the with the speed of uh, the implementation and connecting to we connecting to. Um, you know, artificial intelligence, uh, especially developers. Uh, we have very talented people uh, at different universities. And I saw it when I was in Algeria this time, people, they know about artificial intelligence, they know about deep learning, and they know about different things. Uh, and they know about programming. You give them different complex problems, they can solve them. Uh, and uh, They're really good. Now, how we can use these people in industry instead of buying ready things that we don't know what's inside. This is a different que question, and this is the biggest problem, especially in oil and gas, because of course we have this big competition with different international companies that they have already or ready to go uh, applications, uh, but with our specific, you know, uh, either culture or specificities, uh, things that they're linked to us as Algerian, uh, especially in industry and in company and enterprise, this is going to be a little bit heavy to uh, trust these people, these talented people, that they can be trusted outside of Algeria. Uh, and, and they don't give them opportunities to develop things in, in, in their countries, in their companies, uh, or uh, in their national companies to do things. I think it, it, it's, uh, it's more about a decision to trust these people, uh, to let them develop, do mistakes, and learn through the mistakes not only about the petroleum uh, engineering and the software engineering, but in any So artificial intelligence, it's, a, it's just a concept that we can use everywhere. 
and it's linked to any specific or industry like petroleum uh, engineering and also to software engineering because we need some people that they do programming a lot of programming and design their algorithm to solve problems uh, and uh, and I, I think the, there is another big um, thing that we need to start doing it is to connect this university to enterprise or industry to solve also this problem because I don't know how many people how many students every year that we they finish their studies in, in uh, Lianash and I don't know what they are doing after this they go to usually international companies because uh, you know they need to they need to live they need to see their future their career and so on uh, and uh, it, it's like me a big loss for a company. Aaron. Do you hear me, Kinza? I can. Let's see if you... Can I ask can a you... question? Another one? Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, at the, at the Yahoo Very Zone, do you have any collaboration with oil and gas companies? Uh, we don't. Because it would be don't. interesting, you know, if you can set up a a collaborative work between Algeria and oil and gas, for instance, for with Sonochak. Because if you look at the uh, AI, you know, and the potential, for instance, we have uh, 3D seismic maps, which is basically an image. And mm -hmm. typically geologists, they use MATLAB to def and develop different algorithms to recognize from the seismic waves, actual formations and the possibility of hydrocarbon finding, yeah? So if you have a deep learning algorithms, this is the low hanging fruit in exploration geology that it can be implemented. And uh, area number two that I see that, you know, Verizon and Yahoo can make an impact for Algeria. So we, uh, at, in Algeria, there is a lot of hydraulic fracturing jobs. Yeah, especially in the Thai oil part. Yeah, in Fadames, I think that's the, that's the basin, yeah. So there you have enormous amount of data which is basically the simple start would be data analytics and using simple predictive analytics yeah, with a multivariate analysis type approach would be, would make a huge operational improvement and cost optimization impact. Yeah. These are the two low hanging fruits where it can be started. I think, um, especially with the low current oil price environment. Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't we don't have any uh, uh, like specific project. So the, the high tech companies, they build their tools, their platform, their infrastructure for themselves. We, we don't go to another sector and uh, sell the projects or sell the product or sell software for them. Big companies. I know I know people I know Algerians actually they 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 actually work at uh, at uh, Schlumberger in, in Houston and uh, they they work in computer science uh, they can work in computer science and they, or computer engineering uh, that, that that they are able to collaborate uh, with you guys uh, they can they can share their experience they can share um, different things there maybe there is a, there are some um, uh, you know collaboration uh, project that, that they can involve some students just to learn how uh, you know the real and the industry um, uh, field how it works um, uh, during either the you know the like through the internship or so or or you know internship or whatever different equations or formulas that they that you they can offer to the students but, but um, uh, the question about using using Mat matlab you know with data science and artificial intelligence and deep learning as it's back i heard a lot of, about matlab and r programming all these tools that not only the computer engineer, uh, computer, so, uh, uh, I mean, computer engineering and computer scientists, they can use it, but also uh, any engineer, any engineer. And they know when I was in Boomerdas, I had a lot of people who were uh, friends. They were uh, students at the Lianash. They were using a lot MATLAB. MATLAB is really good now 
with all the scientific and engineering thing that you can connect and get some data and then analyze the data. Um, and it's, it's good. I think if an engineer knows how to manipulate through MATLAB, it's going to be the same programming uh, or concept of programming of, of any tool or any programming language similar to Python. Uh, now we are specific, we are going specific about Python, it's because all the deep learning platform, they were developed through Python because it's easy and at the same time it's powerful. But the concept of programming, the concept of learning, how you can design an algorithm that you can connect it to the data and analyze the data, this is the best concept. If the engineer can, uh, can be able to do that, then it's good. And yes, um, uh, company can get the data which is a little bit complicated but everything you now it's on open source on 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 the, on the internet so you can take the data set and then you can develop your own uh, on your field on different other fields like mechanical engineering or anything or petroleum engineering just take the data set and then create your your uh, platform create your algorithm your model and then you can do the training now you can find the cloud um, like for free you can test it and then you can do your training on the cloud and then you finish your stuff and then you have kind of a, a good model uh, that you you can develop uh, linked to whatever the topic you are looking for what uh, do we have in Merzug and uh, Nadia Muaddin, um, would, you pre, uh, would you please answer them? Uh, what's the question? I don't see the question. Uh, wait, Ahmed, uh, so Ahmed says, uh, thanks a lot, sir, for your intervention. I really appreciate it. I have been working on deep learning and machine learning algorithms. Uh, deep learning is a tool to use to solve engineering problems. We always try to tune the algorithm for a purpose. However, it gives a data-driven model, but far from physics. Do you think the machine learning will influence the path of physics and engineering? Of course, yeah. So the, the concept of artificial intelligence is all using all your data. And then uh, this data will be organized and, and then uh, talk to each other to make a decision. This is the concept of artificial intelligence. So wherever the domain of expertise you would like to deploy, physics or mechanical engineering or anything else, any science, then it's going to be helpful. Now, the way how you do it, the way how you do it, it's going to be different. Of course, for physics, it's going to be different. For mechanical engineering, it's going to be different. And then for com computer science, it's going to be different. But it's, it's here, it's a concept that you, you, if you would like to take advantage of it, you can take advantage of it. But you need to think about the ID. You need to think how I'm going to use it. It's not just here, I need to learn it for, that's it. You need to learn it and then connect it to your science or anything you are preparing. If you are good in physics, you will find something that artificial intelligence or deep learning that can help you solve some problem using the, the tremendous amount of data that you, have to, that you have to solve this problem. So yeah, it, it is helpful. It is helpful for any science. Uh, the next question is from Nadia Muaddin. Uh, she's saying, thank you, Morad, for this interesting presentation. I'm currently working on my final study project, which is a classification problem. For this purpose, uh, for this purpose, I'm using fuzzy inference system using MATLAB. At the same time, I'm working on decision tree. So uh, my, quest my question is, if the, is there a possibility to combine these two tools uh, or, will I, or I will only do a comparison? comparison? Well, it depends what you want to do. Uh, of course, the fuzzy logic with the, with prediction, it's going to, it's, it's yeah, I, I think, I think uh, for classification, this is what people, they do. Uh, now how you combine or you do the comparison, it depends what you would like to do through your topic. I mean, the, the project you are, you are preparing for. Um, 
if you want to compare, then uh, I, th I think uh, I think it's going to be a very good uh, uh, compar comparative uh, study. If we would like to use it, uh, use them for classification, it's going to be it's going to be also a good idea. I think also you need to add on on the top of this actually is the performance, uh, the performance between uh, between um, actually using the fuzzy uh, logic for classification and also the prediction. Uh, how how is going to be different in this case? Uh, uh, what I mean by performance, of course, when you use uh, when you use um, machine learning or deep learning or uh, or uh, or artificial intelligence in general, you have some prediction uh, error, and then uh, the performance is going to change for different reasons. One of them is the how deep is the the neural network, and also how complex is the problem and also how representative is the data. So all these are the challenges that you can use with your study. As you know, uh, you gave me some few keywords that I think you are in the domain uh, using the artificial intelligence. Uh, MATLAB, I don't know if it's going, I, I don't know MATLAB. I, I, her, I, yeah, I mean, I know it as a, as a, uh, as a the GUI for, for uh, scientific things, whatever. But I did. I, I had some like small examples, but I don't know really about MATLAB. But if you can learn Python uh, with all the data data science libraries and modules, it can help you a lot and save a lot of time. Uh, we have another question from Habi Wadi. Uh, hello, first of all, I want to thank you for your presentation. I want to implement support vector machine regression using MATLAB. And I have a question. Uh, if SAVMR can predict more than three outputs or not. Another question for fuzzy inference. Is it possible to work on regression cases or, uh, or is it just for classification outputs? Thank you. Yeah, I think it's more about the classification. I don't understand the, the other terms. I think it's uh, these are the projects that usually people they use for petroleum, <coughs> uh, petroleum engineering field. Uh, everything which is connected to artificial intelligence, I can help. Uh, again, most of people here, uh, they use MATLAB. I don't know why they don't want to learn Python and they use all the libraries and make their life maybe easier and use all the deep learning platform that already exist in. I think if you go through open source, you find something that's already there. You just need to maybe change things and uh, maybe add something on the top and understand all the, the architecture of the of the model uh, that can help you. Uh, MATLAB, I don't know what's the, uh, there's a, there may be a problem <coughs> uh, that I need to maybe open MATLAB. What's the performance when you do uh, execution? Uh, is it interpretation or is it comp a compilation if you compile your model after this or not, which is very, um, very uh, uh, connected to the, to, the, to, the, to the performance of your uh, output uh, too. So um, honestly, in this, for this question, uh, there are some few keywords uh, which is specific for petroleum engineering. What I can say, uh, fuzzy uh, logic uh, in general is more uh, helpful for um, uh, for classification more than anything else. <coughs> uh, are there any other questions? Um, I guess there are there are, there are no other questions. So, uh, if anyone wants to ask uh, Morad any uh, other question, maybe about his path, or maybe about uh, uh, anything, any information he may he may want, he can ask him now. Uh, I think that we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I have, I have something for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have something for them because, uh, uh, I was maybe sitting the same way like they are right now. Uh, uh, maybe one of the streets in there. And I was spending a lot, a lot of time in the Bibliothèque Universitaire. They are the same way. 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 They are the same
ça a changé, ou là, des buildings, etc. I think you need to believe on yourself. Uh, most of people, les écoutent maintenant, fait bombardage. Alhamdulillah, they are successful, yani now. Ils sont à l'université. Like every day, you go to school, uh, you you go to classes, you learn things. You think maybe it's not going to be helpful in the future. We have this doubt, and but we are human being. My situation, na shuiya suferi na shuiya fil fil jamia. Surtout, um, surtout mon zinzla. On a fait ça en 2003, 2004, 2005. On va dire la France. Surtout mon zinzla, we were suffering. Uh, it was very, very difficult, especially to get back again. So it was, uh, it was difficult. So every day, uh, I had hope. Believe one day is going to change. One day is going to be better than the day before. Uh, the only thing, the only key, li qadri aoun ay ay talb li rahi shufiya li dok, huwa anik tetalim haja. Everyone fi Jazeera yqulik bili maybe teaching quality is not good. Yqulik maybe the classes no. Um, you know, in the US, bish tqara lazim nik minimum khamsin alf dollar li semester. The Decent university. I'm not talking about Stanford or UC Berkeley, whatever. The idea, and when you go to the universities like this, it's all about you. You have to do all the homework, and you have to do all the work. You have to do it in the morning, and you have to do it in the morning. And then you have to do the exam for this. 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 I think we have in uh, Bumerdas, because when I could film, I know how many universities are Bumerdas. We have all resources, the all resources, to be or to have an international uh, quality of education. Alash, school it's about you. It's it's not about the teacher book. Teacher is here just to give you orientation. When a teacher is the same thing. Gheri tchuli kol homework, homework, homework. Ya tchuli slide, tchara li slide, do roh bia, wo roh juz li exam teak, wo roh tel bibliotek zit tchara. في الجزائر ولا في جامعة أبو مرداس you have everything go to the library وكل حاجة is free everything is free you need to take advantage of this خاطر مش كيش تروح تطول بزاف الحكاية هذه لونك في at the end you will have the degree tag now the question is how's good degree tag دائما يبوزي لي هاد لاكيسيون تاعي هاد لاكيسيون في الشانل تاعي degree tag as good تقدر تروح تقرأ به في فرنسا تقرأ به في الأمريكان it's your knowledge the degree just it's a paper It's your knowledge. But everywhere, everywhere in the world, they give you opportunity. Show full that you are smart. If you take advantage of the opportunity, class means that. I know the one who is from Stanford. I am not going to be like that. I am near of me, in the office. He was had an opportunity to be a rich man. He had a rich man. He entered Stanford. Maybe he is very smart. He got a scholarship in smart Stanford. He entered. At the end, I'm ahead of you. When I read the book, Mardas. So it's about opportunities. I mean, you know what you learned. You know what you read. Instead of spending your time being a loser, I mean, you think I'm really mad, rich, and we're not here in the country, we're not like that, we're not here with the issues, with the city, with the rest, etc. No, see it in a positive way. Really, these things are here just to make you facilitate the way you read the book. وماشي تتكل انا لازم تتكل على روحك دائما حنا نخمو سوا دائما نحوسو على حاجه فري نوثينك از فري ودائما نحوسو على واحد اللي مدلنا حاجه سهله از نوت جوين تو بي ايزي اف يو تيك ا باث اللي يكون ساهل اي ميز بلي سم وان توك ات بيفور يو و اف سم وان توك ات بيفور يو هذاك الباث اي ميز ذات ات ذا اند اوف ذا باث يو ار نوت جوين تو جيت ا لوت اوف ثينكس لازم تفتح انت الباث تاعك كيما تكون تتمشى في الحشيش ولا في الشجر ولا في الغابه ولا بديت نتايا اتس غون تو بي هارد بصح وين توصل اتس غون تو بي سمثينغ نيو فور يو اتس غون تو بي اكسايتنج فور يو سيم ثينغ دونك اي ثينك انا فور ذا ستودنت اوف بومرداس يو هاف ذا لوداسيتي سي ديز الجيريان كومن نحبوا ننجحوا هكذا دايرين حنا الجزائريين يحبوا ينجحوا دائما اون بوز لا كيستيون هذيك علاش كيخرج الجزائر من الخارج ينجح باسكو يحب ينجح ما كانش عنده اوبورتينيتي في البلاد بتات ما يحب ينجح وثاني جزنا على دي ديفيكولتيز يعني تشالنجز في البلاد سو so everything for us is going to be easy outside of Algeria because 
جوزنا تشالنجز في البلاد يعني عيينا عيينا باللور اوف ثينكس تروح ادمنستريشن ديفيكولت عندنا البيروكراسي هذيك ما تجيبش حاجه بالساهل كي تخرج يو نيد جست تو يوز يور برين ويز نوت جوين تو بي ايزي اوت سايد تو سفري الغربه ماشي سهله غربه صعيبه و باش يديوك انت وما يديوش ولاد بلادهم سي كو انت تشوفي لا ديفيرون تشوي اونيك علاش تشوي اونيك باسكو عندك باغاج في راسك دونك الوقت اللي كنت يعني نهضر مع الصحاب البروميير اني ولا الدوزيام اني ولا الكاتريام اني شو با لو سيستم دونك كيش ولا كلاسيك كيفاش كان كان 50 تاع انجينيور او متنو ما شي با سي كوا مي العوام اللي تكون فيهم في الجامعه ولا العوام اللي ما تكونش في الدار تجي للجامعه ولا تسكن في بومبرد اسواريف روح تقرا على مراسك حوايج اللي تتعلم اللي تستخدمهم كيما دوك اصلا لا بوزي اون بون كيستيون انه تعلم بروغرامين تعلم بايثون بروغرامين تعلم بايثون بروغرامين كل واحد عنده دوك الكمبيوتر تاعو روح لا بيبيوتيك خرج كتاب تاع بايثون ولا داتا ساينس بايثون فور داتا ساينس وبدا تخدم كي تتلف لك كامل معليش بعث لي ميساج قول لي واش هما لي ريفيرونس اللي نستعملهم حبيت نخدم داتا ساينس ولا ارتفيشال انتليجنس اي كان هيلب يو ويذ ريفيرونسز كان هيلب يو ليرنينغ وكاين كاين كاين العلم في في البلاد في البيبيوتيك اكسيتيرا في انترنت كاين كل شيء علم روحك وبي ريدي من بعد ربي سهل وين الباث تاعك وين يديك ممكن تنجح في البلاد ممكن تنجح برا البلاد ما على بالكش المكتوب تاعك وين يديك مي كاينه حاجه every day it can negative is not going to help uh, you uh, tu vas pas trouver des motivation but to be a loser try to be positive and build skills and have skills you want to be in the future so to keep going to be because you take advantage we have a long senior in boomer desk in the architecture we have homework we have homework قالنا اوكي يا شكون 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 يلقى زعما لا سوليسيون هوم ورك حنا ما درناش قالنا علاش ما درتوش قلنا له ما عندناش وقت قالنا قالنا ما عندكمش الوقت دوك تسمى انتم وين يو ستارت وركين ويذ فاميلي اتسيترا فو بونسي بلي يكون عندكم الوقت سي ماتنو يو نيد تو ميك تايم تو ليرن يو نيد تو ميك تايم تو ليرن باسكو هذاك الوقت هذاك از غون تو بي C'est, c'est très précieux. In the future, after three, four years, when I soutenir le doctorat, on va trouver une vie qui est non planifiée. Soutenir l'ingénieur, ou soutenir le master, ou soutenir le doctorat. Moi, tu passes une vie non planifiée, qui est tu tu you are free to do whatever you want. Tu ne trouves pas maintenant le temps, parce que you, you don't know from where you, you are going to start. At least, tu as skill planifié pour que tu ne te rejoignes pas de l'école. Tu ne dis pas que tu ne te rejoignes pas. Non, dans l'école, tu te rejoignes. Who it's the best environment, the best ecosystem, certainly in the Jamia Al Jazeera, there is a quality. There is a quality. Can be the best people from the Jamia Al Jazeera or I'm successful. Look, you need to believe in this. Ma kash wahed liji kulkum bili nas li qarab kiri etc. No. Hadi 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 kamil ma kash minha. Li qara yilqa. That's it. Ati talkum ba Algerian language bish tfahmu le message ilhak direct. يعطيك الصحة بزاف بزاف موان ذات از فيري انسبيريشنال يعطيك الصحة بزاف بزاف باسكو جوستومون هذا تخمم راهو شايع بزاف بزاف يقولوا انا ام ان الجيريان اي اي دو نوت هاف اكسس تو ماني اوبورتونيتيز وكاع اند يو ار ذا بروف ذات وي كان ميك ات اول يعني كيما كيما انت رحت لستانفورد قادر واحد اخر يروح و all all we need is to work on that and uh, so we have two more questions uh, we will have two more questions and that's all so uh, the first one is from uh, uh, is from Mustafa can you give us some possible ideas of startups that we can execute in Algeria concerning AI okay هنا نهضر على واحد التوبيك توجور اللي دائما لي جون يسناو في الادفايزر اللي هو يجيب لهم طابيك باش يديروا السوجي دو فان دي تيوب ويتش از رونغ ويتش از فيري رونغ علاش باسكو اتس ذا ستودنت هو اللي يخمم في الايديا علاش بيكوز هي از ذير يقرا يكمل ومن بعد يشوف يشوف ات ذا اند يدير السامري تاع واش قرا لي سانكون تاعو ولا لي كاترون باش يدير تيم دو ريشيرش حاجه 
you need to believe on yourself. تقول بلي أنا جبي فيك كيك شوز دينيك. بس كي تشوف سي تشوف فيك كيك شوز دبيان اللي تحس روحك بيان فيها. Let's say that petroleum engineer, you like it. If you don't like it, درتها بس جيب خدمة etc. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. بس سنة واحد يجي يعطيك فكرة. No, it's not going to work like this. لازم الفكرة أنت تجيبها. No, ideas about startups etc. كيما كيما في petroleum engineering, شوفوا small like a mini operation. ليتن دار في بيك كومبانيز كي تشوفوا عندكم صحابكم يقراو معاكم ولا كانوا افونسي في لي كلاسيس عليكم ايتترا راحوا يخدموا يحكيوا لكم على اوبريشن ذات يو كان ديفلوب ات كان بي لايك ا سمول كومباني لي توليو تخدموا يعني هذيك الايديا يو ديليفر ذا برودكت فور بيك كومباني ومن بعد الكومباني هذيك سوا تشريكم ولا يو نيد تو ثينك لايك ذيس لازم تخموا بزنس افتر ذيس الناس اللي حبت دير ستارت اب ماشي كامل الناس حبت دير ستارت اب كي تكمل البتروليوم انجينيرينغ كاين عباد اللي حبوا يكملوا ريسيرش كاين عباد اللي حبوا يخدموا بيك كومباني في الكورب لايك شلومبرجي سوناتراك وات ايفر لي بيك كومبانيز هادو تاع الاويل اند غاز سوا سيرفيسز ولا وات ايفر مي انت كي ولا حبيت دير ستارت اب لازم يكون عندك بيزنس مايند لازم تخمم توجور بلي غير تشوف حاجه تقول ايه ذيس ويل جينيريت ماني اتس نوت انت الناتور تاعك ما تكونش ما تكونش ستادير كي تمشى في لي مانيش عارف انا في في بومبرداس في لي ويسون وات ايفر ولا في الفرون دو مار اون فاس لا ميزون كولتير تاع اللي قدام الريكتورا دائما تشوف حاجه دائما تقول او ذيس از جوين تو بي جود ايديا تو جينيريت ماني ماشي برك لازم تكون كونيكتي البتروليوم انجينير البتروليوم انجينير انت قريتها ناو يو نو اول ذا فيلد ثيوريكمون بيان سيور مي دائما تخمم تشوف لي بروجي لي داروا الحوايج اللي راهو مين داروا في الفيلد تاعك لازم تكون على اطلاع دائم مع الحوايج لي الابديت يعني لي نوفوتي تاع الفيلد تاعك وتشوف كيفاش انت تقدر تلقى الجاب هذيك وتلقى حل صغير ماشي لازم تكون حاجه كبيره نو لازم تبدا بحاجه صغيره ومن بعد تو ديفلوب وكامل الكومبانيز الكبار بداو حاجه صغيره يعني فيري ستوبيد سي اون بار دو امازون امازون كان يبيع كتابات ذيس از ذا ايديا فور هيم كان الناس كانت تمد الكتابة تاعها ترمي الكتابة تاعها قال كوكي جوفي لي كوليكتي ونحطهم في السيت ويب ونبيعهم للغاشي شو امازون وراه هي ذا ريتشست يعني الفاوندر تاعها هي ذا ريتشست مان ذا وورد باسكو ايدي صغيرة ايدي سامبل مي ليدي هذي شونج اتس جوين تو تشينج لايف ناو شوف الايديا هذي اللي اتس فيري سيمبل ذير از ا كاب واتس فيري انترستين هضر مع دي جون سبيسياليست تقول لهم وات دو ثينك اباوت ذيس ايديا ايتترا You need to start. This is the thing. You need to start with a small thing, any idea, and to work on it. No artificial intelligence. To answer your question, artificial intelligence is a new domain. Or deep learning, especially deep learning. It's a new domain. Let's use the data to take a decision or make decisions. So anything you see, believe you generate a lot of data, uh, labeled or not labeled, or supervised or unsupervised learning. Take it. You can make a decision. Think about. You make a decision, then it's a good idea. We choose believe. Let's not choose the market as good existing, but existing. Can you do the business plan? Something like this. Maybe job idea or develop it. Now, there is there is a pipeline to develop the idea. And the and the lead it towards you. You need to do some market research. And after you choose believe, clear up the full market. You can compete. When it exists, if it's a unique idea, then it's good for you. When you, but the question is, you need to plan. You need to plan. You need to do a business plan. باش باسكو يقول لك واحد اللي اللي ما بلانيفياش سي تا دير الى بلانيفي بوغ لي شيك هذه هي كالكان كي نا با بلانيفي سي تا دير الى بلانيفي بوغ لي شيك دونك يفوك تو بلان تو الموند فا بلانيفي دو بيزنس بلان ومن بعد البيزنس بلان هذاك تتعلم فيه حوايج بزاف باسكو علاش تو ديكورتيك لي دي تاعك لي دي تاعك ابوبري تتعلمها اكثر باسكو انت تكون عندك برك فكره ومن بعد كون تو تو لا ديفلوب تلقى بزاف حوايج فيها واحد اخرى تتعلمهم انت اللي ما كنتش على بالهم في على بالكش في الديبي باسكو تشوف لي جون كيفاش راهم يخدموا فيها كيفاش راهم يديروا كيفاش يلا ديفلوب كومباري ليك ولا سي اونيك تشوف حوايج لي تشابهوا يشبهوا لها وتشوف كيفاش يديفلوبيوها سي دو سويت دونك وين يو دو يور ماركت ريسيرش بزنس بلان ومن بعد دير بروتوتايب تاعك من بعد خمم سورتو في اي ثينك اويل اند غاز ولا Petroleum engineering, it's a big field when you have a lot of ideas from nothing, especially with artificial intelligence using the data set or the data that you can exist in. And the data is available. You can go to the internet and open source data, connect to 
application engineering to come and see web to come and data that you can use to develop your idea. Uh, our last question will be from uh, Rawan Berber. I'm in first year and I don't have much experience uh, with, I mean, I'm in first year and I don't have much experiences. So do you think scientific clubs are helpful to develop ourselves? Very good uh, question. Yes. Uh, very, very good question. Yeah. Here in America, it's the alumni or the club scientific clubs. Alumni, alumni is very, very helpful. For, I'm happy to do this presentation. I feel you guys. I feel you. كنت في الانفيرونمون تاعكم في الجامعه اللي كنت تقراو فيها ميبي لانستيتيو لي ديفيرون ستيري ايفريثينغ ذا سيم ميبي لي غوا لي تشيتهم ايتترا بيبيوتيك دير روح لها ولون في كان كالكو زون في جوزنا فيهم ديزامان تحت في ديانا سيرتامون سي لي ميم زون في كنت تقراو فيها سو اتس جيفين باك اتس جيفين باك تو ذا 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 يونيفرسيتي والالومناي هادو ما يقدروش تورغانيزاو هكذا كبر اليوم كنزا مع التيم تاعها بتروليوم اسوسيشن هذه تلقاوني في الفيسبوك باسكو بنت اتسيتيرا وحبوا يديروا ان بريزونطاسيون حبي باش نمدوا ان بريزونطاسيون ميم طون تتعرفوا عليا اتس جود ذيس از ذا واي هاو يو وجيسبير كو نمدد لكم اتليست سمول ميسج اللي هو لا بيرسيفيرونس دونك هذا الساينتيفيك كلوب ولا لي اسوسيسيون ولا لي كلوب سيانتيفيك ولا لي زيتوديون اورغانيزي C'est très très important pour n'importe quelle université. Ou qu'on ait connu bzaf qu'on ait bien. Maintenant, à faire ta budget, marcher budget, etc. Avec une différente discussion. Bien sûr, il faut que tout le monde étudiant soit affilié à quelque chose. Quelque chose ou au moins qu'il crée l'association. À la base, il y a la bureaucratie qui est très grande, etc. Mais si vous avez une idée sur votre association ou le club scientifique que vous travaillez pour une spécialité de votre domaine, Je pense, que, je pense que l'administration de la Jamia a fait comme ça. Parce que vous êtes organisé. Ou qui est organisé, vous pouvez faire des choses ensemble. At least, il y a un bureau qui est en train de se faire. Ou même le classroom. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est en train de se faire. Il y a un chef de l'école qui est l'organigramme, etc., quelqu'un qui est président, quelqu'un qui gère ça, les événements, etc. When you gather students, ou dire une chose qui est comme ça, par exemple, un je fais une présentation, l'autre fait quelque chose, tout même entre étudiants, quelqu'un qui a une idée, il veut, il veut la développer, etc. C'est la richesse de l'université. Et vous ne pouvez pas la faire dans une autre Parce que c'est l'écosystème, le meilleur écosystème pour développer des idées. Et dans les clubs scientifiques, vous pouvez développer des startups, vous pouvez parler des, 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 des idées qui peuvent être développées within the university ou là, even outside of the university. So I think the priority is to be affiliated to a, a, a student association ou la club scientifique ou la whatever. Ou là, if it doesn't exist, everyone is responsible to create one. Everyone. Mais tu te dis, ok, on a dit le carré là, on va le faire. On va le faire. Non. People here in the U.S. They are creating the concept at 24 hours. University for 24 hours. What does it mean? Man, you have 24 hours and you are in the university. Mais tu peux te dire, le université, c'est te dire, des networks de ta gueule, tu apprends dans la bibliothèque, tu fais des choses fun, tu apprends, tu apprends, tu apprends des tables, tu apprends, mais je ne sais pas, un sport que tu aimes, etc. It doesn't mean that you have to be sophisticated. No. انت مع على بالي لي ريسورس اللي كاينين في الجزائر على بالي باللي سي با كوم لي زيتاجيني جو سي مي انت مع روحك يفوك تجي ديفلوب روحك انك تكون يو هاف فان ات ذا يونيفرسيتي ماشي برك تكمل قرايتك تروح لا سيتي لا شومبر يونيفرسيتير ومغلق على روحك وخلاص نو الجامعه اتس نوت ذيس ذا يونيفرسيتي اتس اكشولي افتر ذا كلاسز كلاسز جست تو ليرن ثينكس من عند من عند الشيخ تاعك ولا الشيخه تاعك اتسيتيرا مي ابخي لازم تروح لبيبليوتيك تو ديفلوب السكيلز تاعك تلاقى مع صحابك تهضروا على توبيك اللي ما فهمتوش في القرايه ومن بعد اونسومبل تروحوا شي با تلعبوا فولي تلعبوا فوت ايتترا افتر ذيس تروحوا للريستو اونسومبل راكو تقصروا في لاشين ميم تكون لاشين كبيره وجو سي كاسكو سافا دير راكو تقصروا ايتترا وتعمر راسك تعمر راسك واحد يمد لك اليدي من الاخر من اليدي من الاخر من اليدي من ايتترا 
من بعد كي تكملوا تقعدوا في الصحراء تقصروا عاد فو ديفلوبي كيك شوز انتم في لاسوسياسيون علاش سي بيان باسكو دون لو كادر دو لاسوسياسيون تلاقاو سوا في البيرو تاع لاسوسياسيون ولا تلاقاو في برا في مانيش عارف انا في في القهوه ايتترا و وريفر وتبداو تقصروا على دي شوز كي اللي يعاونكم بزاف مي لي جون لي ايتيديون فو اكسبواتي لي 5 اون ولا لي 4 اون اللي راكم في لونيفرسيتي باسكو ابري توليو تحوسوا عليهم بالشمعه وما تلقاوهمش بيكوز ذيس ذيز ار ذا بيست ييرز و سورتو في الجزائر ما قريت انا في فرنسا زدت قريت انا جيت دير بوست دوك في امريكا الجزائر از فيري فيري سبيشال مع كامل واش فيها difficulties challenges Algeria is very very special surtout Boumerdas pour moi les années juste en Boumerdas avec le sadness de le tremblement de terre les dana nas li nhabouhum w rabbi yarhamhum qrib le 20 mai li tarhamou alayhum it was not easy yani people li kanou mak le classroom ou bad soit huma soit la famille it was easy بصح وي ستيل هاف هذيك لا نوستالجي تاع تاع بومرداس از سي ان بول ديكسيلونس بومرداس سي اون يونيفرسيتي سي اون فيل يونيفرسيتير اللي عندها سبيسيفيسيتي تاعها اللي ما تقدرش تلقاها في اون فيل وحده اخرى انا جو جو دي توجور بلي جو سوي دو شيرشي الاوريجينال سي اون فيل كوتيير كيف كيف كيما بومرداس مي تو تو سيتيز اللي نحبهم بزاف هما شرشال اي بومرداس باسكو بومرداس ما دوني بوكو دو شوز que ce soit à travers le Jamia, etc. Mais aussi comme ville, comme ville, c'est comme ville que j'ai vécu, les Timchit, les Nhebha. Donc, les étudiants, je vais vous commencer à profiter tant qu'à raconter vos mères ou profiter dans le une positive way. Tu as everything. Où est-ce que le Jamia? Jamia, tu as tout ce que tu as. تعلموا من دور تايم مش حاجه ستوبيد ثينكس تفاهات هكا منه من باسكو تاكوميلاو من بعد جوز عليكم لي زاني ولا ما ردو بليتش ولا ما ما خدتش ديبلوم الجامعه ويتش از ذا وورست تحس باللي تو نا با في بوكو دو شوز في الجامعه دونك بروفيتي اي بروفيتي في فيري جود واي ساينس اتس راكو فما فور ا بيربوز اوف اوف ساينس اوف نولج تيك ادفانتج اوف ات هذه هي So our last question will be from Stephen Morrison. Uh, thank you so much, sir. That was really helpful. I have a question. What do you think about this field? As you know, with the need of renewable energy and uh, soon there will be no petroleum. So what uh, should we do with that? So I just have a, a small note. The, it's not that there will be no petroleum. It's just that uh, for now our resources are limited and we did not discover a we did not discover yet other reserves and all and that's another topic so i will let uh, murad answer uh, your question yeah and, and i'm malheureus most the answer response uh, professor belkasim hubaykdar because he's uh, he's more in renewable energy and everyone is talking about as uh, the future how for how long it's going to be when we move from uh, i don't think it's going to be for soon باسكو راني نشوف هنا في الامريكان مالغري البترول هبط اتترا والاويل مي سي اون سوسيتي دو كونسوماسيون انورم يعني سورتو كونتي ساجي دو ستاسيون سيرفيس وتعمر الغاز وتعمر ليسونس سي دي سي سي دي جون كي 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 مارش كي مارش يعني يمشيو سي سي دي ديفيرامون على فرنسا سي دي جون كي بخان لا فواتيور عندهم دو ترو فواتيور في 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 الهاوس في الدار دونك اسكو وي ار غوين تو موف فروم ذيس تو الكتريك كارز Uh, will uh, renewable energy at the, in the future وقتاش for, for sure uh, people they talk about uh, saving the planet wherever but uh, yes in certain hypocrisy there yeah i don't think it's going to be very soon uh, i don't have uh, malheureusement i don't have uh, unfortunately i don't have a lot of knowledge in the field that i'm more in computer science computer engineering uh, now i can talk about the renewable energy for cooling and uh, power consumption for data centers Uh, and we are moving slowly, actually, uh, like water cooling, all these things are not going to be, to be very helpful. And more, we are more about electricity and uh, and stuff. And, and electricity is, is cheap, relatively cheaper than anything else. Uh, in the US, 
the only place when the electricity is expensive is Hong Kong. We have a data center from now, we are struggling with it. But how would the answer to your question, I don't think it's going to be for very soon. And I don't think that the human being are ready, are ready to really take a, uh, take a big step uh, to protect the environment. <coughs> uh, we have a lot of things. Uh, we have a lot of things, uh, especially industry and economic. Uh, so so in big countries like America and uh, like Malachine, etc. I think it's the most grand consumer in the world. I think these, these are the actors that we can move to renewable energy, especially China, because it's the factory of the world. Uh, I think uh, it's one of the biggest actors. Uh, if, if they move, then we can move. Uh, the rest, I think, uh, I, th I think we are just followers. Uh, and it's going to take, uh, I, I would say, between Kima uh, Kimakalt Kinza. Resources are limited. Uh, now usually we, we move Barku Kikun emergency, Kimal coronavirus. Last time I was to talking to Professor Milakshi, Professor Belkasim Hibba. Why people they think about war? Why think people they think about uh, les armements? Uh, they, they build uh, arms. Uh, to fight each, to each other, alors que j'ai un virus biologique, les les malabars qui m'attendent tous chez m'attendent tous fou, ou mach mach moulouche, they didn't create even uh, uh, une cellule de, de crise ou la uh, how how they can fight against uh, this virus. Uh, Alors les trumeaux, uh, why we are, s'mouli al kima, why are we are stupid at this level? Uh, we don't think about uh, some. Think Kima Kima Lumarana Confini Diarna or Economy Rahiraha Fiha U Nasait Mut. Why we didn't think about this? Everyone is thinking to build the sophisticated arms who create horrob everywhere in the world. I think this is the biggest question. Uh, at the same time, Berk Nesli Mehmet Hadou, my coronavirus, is the, maybe the biggest peak, sort of, Talim second. Uh, look, uh, all these questions, Mazana Hirin Bashari Pondi Walihom, Alor left for renewable energy, Demon Smirk, Kayet, Kayet, Kayet. We didn't move over. Uh, we cannot move now because uh, because of the strategic, uh, political, and economical situation. Alor la more malchaju coronavirus. I think uh, the, the China is going to shava shava shava. Yani machia plain gas or the US the same thing. They will be like crazy uh, to catch up. Camel the uh, economical crisis with the things that we lo lost. Uh, I don't know how many trillion dollars. We lost, but they, they need to catch up on, on economy for especially biggest countries can have. I think uh, this, is, this is my thought. We uh, probably manage from the speciality, but we become more technical things. Um, topic. Uh, so, Stephen uh, Morrison, uh, Al Jazeera. Stephen Morrison, Al Jazeera. <laughs> I, was, uh, well, I, um, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, what do you think uh, is the trend besides AI for skills in the actual and future job market? Yeah, this is a good question too. So, uh, except da data science or artificial intelligence, I think IoT is going to be t the trend. So, I work at Verizon. Verizon is an operator telephonic in the Jazeera Algeria Telecom. So, we Everyone is talking about 5G and it's it's a sitting girl, but it's a big war now. 5G is the big war. Who is going to own the 5G? Who is going to manipulate and use 5G? Uh, because it's a it's the fastest internet. So everything the trend is going to be connected to the internet uh, and uh, IoT. Kima kolu kima hadar tehnaf artificial intelligence. Uh, it has it ha before it has um, it had some uh, winter and yani, uh, slowdown. Uh, IoT can end up slow down during the 4G because NASP that developably connected object, etc. Internet was the problem. Uh, Self-driving cars too, because we need to connect this, this cars. So the 5G is going to change a lot of things in the world. It's going to be um, uh, telemedicine of us developing bizarre because there's no problem with internet. There's no problem with, um, with the connection. Everything is going to be connected and fast. So uh, all the object will be connected. 
or the object will be uh, internet, will be connected to the internet. So the trend is going to be through that. So internet of things, I think is one of the trend. Artificial intelligence is also, also, is also going to be embedded in the IOTs too, the internet of things. So uh, I'm guessing that with 5G, uh, a lot of things in the world is going to change. Uh, connectivity in the world is going to change. The internet itself is going to be different internet that we know. Uh, uh, the trend also is going to be different internets instead of one internet uh, englobing all the world. It's going to be China internet, the USA internet, Euro Europe internet, different internet, uh, uh, private, and then some public internet like before. Hadi is going to be one of the trend too. Um, if we talk about IOTs, uh, we talk about security issues because uh, you cannot connect and not share data. So it's going to be a lot of uh, wars of uh, hackers, of uh, security, of privacy. Uh, data will be everywhere and uh, your data will be everywhere. How we are going to protect this data is a big challenge too. This is so the security, the cyber security is one of the trends. And then it's going to be, uh, I'm talking about my field, of course, but uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be big, big issue. Uh, because uh, computer science will be on a service to any engineering or the science uh, fields. Uh, internet, being uh, the informatics will be with medicine, so to with all the health problems, the viruses, will health uh, healthcare in general. So, gil the informatics to resolve some problems. The informatics gil to resolve some problems with artificial intelligence, for oil and and gas or petroleum engineering in general. Uh, and other fields, uh, and all this will be um, will be really connected to to each other. And uh, I I'm guessing that the, the 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 fifth generation of internet is going to change the world. Uh, thank you, uh, Morad. Thanks a lot for this uh, for the for your answers for your presentation. It was really really. Uh, a great presentation. We learned a lot, and uh, all the participants uh, learned a lot too. So, uh, thank you for honoring us with uh, sharing your knowledge and and uh, taking giving us some of your time to to help the the, the, the new uh, generation of Algerian students and all. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kenza. Thanks for your team. Uh, you are doing a great job. And the Facebook page, JV uh, website, it's really a professional work. Keep going. Uh, uh, you, need, you need to do things. You need to do uh, such events. And uh, great job. Good luck for your studies. They are preparing something. Uh, to finish uh, whatever the mini project will uh, the project from the for memoir. It's your idea. Don't go to your advisor to ask for for an an term of research. There's no two men because you have the lead. You have the key. You need to do So a startup to be successful uh, because it's your your idea. It's like your baby. Uh, you can go. Uh, you can use the the same thing to go uh, farther. Uh, on your career, inshallah. Thank you. So uh, I guess uh, that's it for today. Yeah. So, so yeah, thanks a lot, Morad. Yeah, thanks a lot. Zef, Zef, who did you have in your, who did you have in your, who did you have in your, to be able to respond to the questions to the students, guys. It's 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 really a very good initiative that you did here, Haka. So uh, thank you all for uh, for being present today, for attending this meeting, and uh, see you guys in the next meeting. Salam. Salam. Bye. Bye.